Okay, let's get started with the second part of arrays, which is two dimensional arrays. We had seen one dimensional arrays earlier and now we have 2D arrays. Also, a lot of times students tend to struggle with these programs or they, they are generally not comfortable with uh, the programs involving 2D arrays. But honestly, if you just tackle them a little smartly or if you can just figure out some little patterns in there, you'll be able to manage this easily. So we'll try and do uh, two things over here. One, obviously, we'll try and understand the whole idea behind 2D arrays, but we'll also find some some shortcuts, some little tricks using which we can write these programs easily or we can manage these programs easily. Okay, let's first try and understand why does the concept of a 2D arrays exist? Why do we have this concept of 2D arrays? Now, suppose if I have some data, say like uh, say a matrix. Now over here, what you can see is, over here you can see that I have a three by three matrix over here, which, which has some values. Now suppose if I'm working with this particular data, then how do we go about it? Now observe this. See, suppose if at all I tell you, suppose I wanted to give you this value, say three from this matrix. Now, if I tell you second row, now if I tell you just the second row, now you don't know which is the value that I'm talking about because it could be any value from this row. Or maybe if at all I say third column, when I say third column, then again, you don't know which is the value that I'm talking about. It could be any of the values on this particular column. So now if I want to give you this value, say three, I will have to say second row and third column. Now, only when I give you both the instructions, only when I give you the row number as well as the column number, you will be able to access this particular value. So what I understand is that if we have data, something like a matrix, now over here for accessing any given data, I need two references. One, the row number and second, the column number. So that is what is needed for accessing any value from a matrix. Now I'm just thinking that if at all I want to store this matrix in some particular memory, then how do we do it or how do we go about doing it? See, as of now, the only method that we know for storing multiple values is an array, a single dimensional array. So suppose if at all, if at all, I store this matrix in a single dimensional array, then it will look something like this. My first row, six, two, five, all have been added over here. My second row is added over here. My third row is added over here. So what I'm trying to do is that whatever is the matrix that I have over here, I'll store it in this array like this. So suppose if I store it like this. Now this can be done. This can be easily done. But understand if I want to refer to a value. Now you saw this that if I wanted to refer to this value, I need to give you two references. One is the row number and the other is the column number. Just row number is not going to help you. Just column number is also not going to help you. So what I do here now is suppose if I have this array over here for accessing any given data, I have only one reference, which is this index. So I have these indexes. Now, what I can do is I can use these indexes either as a row number or either as a column number. Now, suppose I assume that I'm going to use these indexes as row numbers. Then again, what I find is just by using row numbers, I'll not be able to access the data. Or maybe if at all I use these indexes as column numbers, even by using them purely as column numbers, I'll not be able to access the data. So the problem that I'm facing as of now is I'm, I'm now looking at the data, which needs two references to get access, but the data structure, which is available to me for storing it, which is an array, it has only, only one single index and which can either be used as a row or a column. So I've just come to a conclusion that using a single dimensional array or this 1D array that you see over here is not going to help me for working with the data in uh, a matrix. And not just for metrics, understand like metrics, there are so many different data for in which for accessing any given value, you need two references. In that case, my one dimensional array will fail because I have only one index, which can either be say a row or a column. So here Ek aise tool ki jis mein I could get two references so that I could use one of them as uh, the row number and the other as the column number. That is why for working with data like a matrix or for working with data like, uh, uh, like a matrix, which needs two references to access any value, we introduce another type of an array 
called a two dimensional array now we call it as a two dimensional array or a 2d array is because over here i'll get two references to access any given data similarly we can have a 3d array we can have a 4d array and we can have an n dimensional array for that matter so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to store this matrix not in the kind of uh, array you see over here but what i'm going to do is i'm going to save it in an array that looks something like this now over here just observe this i have created an array suppose this is an array a that i have created this array now has two references the row numbers and the column numbers now moment i say that it's an array the indexes will always start at zero so over here if you see i've i've started with zero so these are my row numbers 0 1 and 2 and these are my column numbers which is again 0 1 and 2 this is what i've got so over here what happens is each memory location now if you see has two references or two indexes observe now for this particular uh, uh, for this particular uh, memory location my index is 0 0 this index is 0 1 this index is 0 2 when you are putting index as row number first and column number then always row numbers first now this is 1 0 1 1 1 2 2 0 2 1 2 2 so over here you can say that for accessing each memory location i have two indexes so over here if you talk of an ordinary array now had i written in array a with say index a 6 so what it will do is it will go to this location which is 6 but understand when i have an array like this if i see just a1 it doesn't make any sense because now it means row number 1 it could be any of these three values but if i say a12 what this will mean is row number 1 and column number 2 now you know that this is the value that i am talking about so this is how i have an array which will provide me with two references the row number and the column number using which i can access the data now this is what is a two dimensional array now see we will be working on all the programs related to uh, to matrix today so this is what uh, this is how we write a matrix and this is how i'm going to keep drawing on all my slides so that you can understand it well because it looks like our uh, our um, normal matrix right but understand just to make things more convenient just to make things uh, say more relatable i've just drawn a table or a grid like this over here and i'm telling you that this is what a matrix is see so, okay on paper you can draw it in whichever the manner you want but practically when you talk of the memory memory mein aisa grid to ban nahi sakta you cannot create a grid like this the question now is or the argument now is then how do i go about creating a matrix like this in the memory how do i do that so understand on paper i've drawn it like this and i'll continue drawing like this because it is easier to relate to but understand when you talk of memory the memory is always allocated in consecutive locations so now if at all you ask me that whatever is this array that i've drawn over here or whatever is this 2d array that i've drawn over here how exactly is it created in the memory now please understand it is actually created in the memory like this it is always on consecutive locations i cannot create a grid like this so actually my first row see this first row 000 sorry 000102 now these values will come in first then i have this these values then my next values will come and then this and then this right but the difference between the previous one dimensional array and this array is that for each memory location now i have two indexes 0001021012 and so on so ideally going ahead with this lecture everywhere where i am talking of a matrix i should be drawing like this but then it becomes slightly difficult for us to relate to because we are used to talking of matrices in terms of rows and columns so that is why i'll continue drawing like this we'll continue understanding codes like this but never ever forget that the entire data is always stored in consecutive locations like this so this is how we are going to create two dimensional arrays one more time when or why do we use two dimensional arrays practically while working sometimes we come across data where i need two references to get access to any value in that data and for us to be able to keep or generate those two references we use a two dimensional array if you tell me i are i have some value which needs three references then i'll have to use a 3d array four references so i can use a four dimensional array but the scope of our lecture is uh, restricted to two dimensional arrays okay
Now, what we'll do is we'll first get started again with an absolute basic program, and then we can continue, uh, and, and then we'll continue uh, increasing the complexity level of the codes. Now, let us go to the first code. Write a program to read and display a matrix of order M by N. Now, over here, we are looking at the, our first very basic program. Now, in this program, all we are going to learn is how to create a matrix of order M by N, how to read it, and how to display it. Now, for all those who don't know this, when you talk of a matrix, suppose if I take a matrix like this. Sorry. So this matrix has two rows and three columns. So I'll say this is a matrix of order two by three. So when you say M by N, M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. So over here in this program, I'm required to create a matrix of order M by N. So we'll go very slowly. We'll understand step by step how to create a matrix. Also, I'm now creating a pattern for accessing the memory in a matrix so that later on when you write your programs, you should be able to write them in the least amount of time possible without having to think too much. Now observe this. How do we go about this? I'll get started here. Now we we'll go them slowly step by step. Now over here, now just look at this integer a 10, 10. Now, if you remember when we were creating a single dimensional array, we always said integer a of say 10, something like this. If I wanted an array with 10 locations, this is how we did. Also, you know that when we talk of a single dimensional array, I cannot write a variable over here. So in all our programs involving single dimensional arrays, we've gone with integer a of 100. Right. So the same rules apply to a two dimensional array as well. Memory allocation for a 2D array is also static memory allocation. So whenever you are creating any array for that matter in C language, you cannot write a variable while creating an array. So over here, I'm creating an array which is of the size 10, 10. What this means is I've created an array A which will have 10 rows which are numbered from 0 to 9 and then I have 10 columns which are also numbered from 0 to 9. Needless to say, this will be 0, 0, 0 and always row number first, column number later and then eventually this will be 0, 9. Similarly, this will be 9, 0, this will be 9, 1, this will be 9, 9 and so on. You'll get the indexes. So you can say that this array can store up to 100 values, right? It is it has nine by it, it is a nine by nine grid. So it can store up to 100 values. Now again, understand like our single dimensional arrays where we had created an array of size 100. And then from that size 100, we were using only what was required. Similarly, over here, I'm going to create a 2D array of order nine by nine. And then from this, I'll be using whatever, uh, whatever my program demands, right? So I've created a 2D array like this. So this is how you will declare a 2D array. Okay, I've declared a couple of variables. We'll talk about this later. M in all our programs will give you the row numbers, which I'm going to ask from the user. And N will give you the column numbers. So matrix is going to be of the order M by N, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. Okay, now just observe this, please. Now. Now over here, what I'll do is to get started, I'll, I'll first ask this user over here, print enter number of rows. Suppose user has given me the value of M as three. Enter number of columns. Suppose user has given me the value of N is also three. So precisely my M by N matrix is supposed to be a three by three matrix. So what the system will do is this array A, out of this array, I'm going to use this, just this much. See, please like single dimensional array, even a 2D array is all about indexes. If you can visualize the indexes, if you can, if you can uh, see this grid or if you can visualize this grid, you will be able to write any program on 2D array. I mean it when I say this, whenever you are writing any program involving a 2D array, just draw a grid like this. And as soon as you draw this grid, you, you will, you will have your answers. You'll understand this as we go ahead with the session. Okay. So now I have read the value of M and N. Now I want to read the data into this array. Now please try and recollect when we were reading the data in a single dimensional array, what was the kind of code that we were writing? For reading a single dimensional array, we were always writing for i is equal to zero. If N is the number of values, I less than N, I plus plus, and we were writing scanf percentage D, ampersand a of i. This is what we were writing, right? 
Now over here, when it came to accessing any memory location in the single dimensional array, we were always using a for loop. The reason for using a for loop, uh, the reason for using a for loop over here is, see over here now, whatever indexes that I need to generate, I wanted someone to generate those indexes for me. And that is what was the role of I. So for loop over here actually was doing two things for me. One, it was ensuring that the statements repeat the desired number of times. And second, it was also generating the indexes for me. If you see this variable I that I'm using over here is actually generating indexes for us. But understand now while working with a 2D array, I want two indexes to be generated, the row numbers and the column numbers. So what I've decided is that I'm going to use two for loops. I'm going to use nested for loops for working with a 2D array. Now, why am I going to use a nested for loop or why am I going to use two for loops? The first for loop will help me generate row numbers and the second for loop will help me generate column numbers. So with this little information that I need two arrays for accessing all the memory locations of a 2D array, or I need two or two for loops for generating two different indexes, I'll just go to the loop. Now just understand how to write this particular loop. Now this is the loop that I'm talking about. Now I'll go very slowly. I'll try and execute this loop for you. Now I'm going to write two for loops. Now I'll give you two little shortcuts for uh, writing these for loops. See, I'm required to read a matrix of order M by N. So what I'm going to do is my first for loop is going to read uh, or going to give me the row numbers. And the second for loop is always going to give me the column numbers. So I'll always go like this for I is equal to zero, I less than M in the first for loop, always use the variable, which gives you the row numbers. Then I plus plus for J is equal to zero, J less than N. On, in the second for loop, always use the variables which gives you the column numbers and J plus plus, right? So I'll always write row. I'll always use the variable which gives me the row number first, then column. And then when I go over here, I'll read the value, enter value. And this is I J. So just remember this, whenever you are accessing any, any 2D array, the little shortcut that you can use is row column I J. What is row? Row is the, the variable which will give me the number of rows uh, uh, in, in uh, column in the second for loop, I'll use the variable which gives me the column numbers and the sequence is I J. See if uh, I is giving me the row numbers and J is giving me the column numbers, obviously I have to give a uh, go I J because in, when it comes to indexes, you always write row numbers first. So keep things simple row column I J is what should be your sequence for accessing all the memory locations for an array. Now, I don't care whether you give me a matrix of order M by N or A by B or, uh, or uh, whatever the order, I'll just use the variable which gives me the row numbers in the first for loop, the variable which gives me the column numbers in the second for loop and I J. Now, suppose you've given me say M as three, you've given me N as three, I'll execute this loop for you. Observe how this for loop will generate indexes for you. Now, just look at this carefully. Now I'll go here. Okay. I zero. Now observe this M ka value is three. So zero less than three is true. Come down. This is J is equal to zero and N is three. I hope you all remember how exactly a nested for loop works. So zero less than three is true. So come down, enter value, read the first value ampersand A of I J. See I is zero, J is zero, A is zero, zero. So whatever is the first value that I read, say five, it will go to this memory location A is zero, zero. Now from over here, I'll go here, increment the value of J. So J becomes one. Then I come over here. See I is still zero. J is now, uh, sorry, uh, J is now one. One less than three is true. I is still zero, J is one. Read the next value at A of I, J. I is still zero, J is one. I is zero, J is one. So A is zero, one. So whatever is your next value, it comes over here. Then I'll go back, J plus plus is two. So J is now two, two less than three is true. Come down, I is still zero and J is to zero, two. So over here, I've got the next value at this index zero, two. 
Now observe this. When i plus j plus plus becomes three, I come over here. J is three. Three less than three is false. This j wala condition fails. My j wala loop terminates. J wala loop terminates. Matlab I have finished reading the first row. So this is how I've read the first row. Now I'll just quickly erase this out and then we'll execute this loop further. Okay. So j wala loop is now done. Now back to the code. Now that this j wala loop terminates, I'll now go to I'll now go to i. So i plus plus becomes one. I is now one. One less than three is true. Come down. J goes back to zero. N is three. Zero less than three is true. Come down. Now i is one and j is zero. A one zero. A one zero is this memory location. Suppose the value that I've read over here is this. So whenever the value of i changes, my row changes. Whenever the value of j changes, my column changes. So then go back. J plus plus is one. Now j is one. One less than three is true. I is still one. I is one. J is one. So I'm reading the next value at a one one. So whatever is the value that you've given me, say seven, it goes here. Then I go back. J plus plus is two. You come over here. Two less than three is true. Read the next value at a of i is still one. And j is what? J is two. A one two. A one two is this location. So I've read this value. Then I go back. J plus plus is three. Three less than three is false. Condition fails. This loop terminates. So precisely, whenever the J wala loop terminates, it's like it's it's marking the end of the row. Now that we've marked, uh, uh, it is marking the end of the row. We have uh, finished reading that particular row. Okay, again, I'll just erase this out. Hmm. Now that this is done. Okay. You go back over here. Now i plus plus is two. Two m is three. Two less than three is true. Come down. J goes back to zero. Zero less than three is true. So i is two. J is zero. So I'm reading my next value at a two zero. A two zero is this memory location. So I'll read the value over here. Go back. J plus plus becomes one. Extremely important that you know nested for for uh, working with metrics. One less than three is true. Read the next value at i is two. J is one. Two one. Two one is this memory location. So suppose I've taken the value over here. Then I go back. J plus plus is two. Two less than three is true. Come down. I is two. J is two. A two two. So my next value say goes here. Then go back. J plus plus is three. Three less than three is false. Condition fails. This loop terminates. Go back. Increment the value of i. I becomes three. Three less than three is false. This condition terminates. My loop terminates. So this is how I have read this particular matrix. So how do we read this matrix? We'll go row. Column i j. I've used two for loops. Now you see, in the first for loop, variable i is giving me the row numbers. The variable j is giving me column numbers, and I've gone row column i j. So over here, what I've done in this code is, I've created an array over here, and I've read it using this particular for loop. Now what I need to do is, I need to write a loop which will display the values from this matrix. So for displaying the matrix, see again when it comes to displaying the matrix, what exactly am I supposed to do? All I am supposed to do is that I am supposed to visit all the memory locations in this particular uh, array and then display the values over there. So I am going to write a similar for loop for displaying the matrix. Always remember when it comes to visiting the memory locations, all the memory locations for an array, you will always have two indexes. You will always need two for loops: one for giving you the row numbers and the second for giving you the column numbers, right? So how do we write that? So this is what is my for loop. Now this is the loop that we've already discussed. Now look at the second half. I'm going to display this. I'm going to use exactly the same logic. Now I'm just filling up the values randomly. Suppose this is the array that we have read. And suppose I want to display this matrix of order three by three. Again, for i is equal to zero, zero less than three. So again, row. Column i j. In my first for loop, I'm using variable m, which is giving me the number of rows. Second for loop, I'm using the variable n, which is going to give me the column numbers. And if you see in my print statement, it is i j. That is the sequence. See, this loop is pretty much identical to the loop that we've just discussed. The only difference is we were reading in the first loop using scanf. Over here, I'm displaying using printf. Right. 
Now, also understand, I don't want my output to look, look like this. 5, 7, 9, 8, 2, 7. No, I want my output to be displayed in the same fashion, like how we write a matrix. So in the form of a grid. So observe this. How will I do this? For i is equal to 0, uh, i less than m, 0 less than 3 is true. Come down to repeat everything within the brackets, right? Now entering this bracket, j is equal to 0, n is how much? n is n is also 3. 0 less than 3 is true. Come down, print ij is 0, 0. Now at index is 0, 0, I have this value 5. So 5 gets displayed over here. Then what I do is I go here. So j from 0, j plus plus becomes 1. Come this way. 1 less than 3 is true. Display the value at a of ij. i is still 0, j is 1. So 0, 1, 0, 1. What is the value at index 0, 1? So it is 7. Then I again go back. J plus plus is 2. 2 less than 3 is true. Come down. A of i, j. i is 0. j is 2. A is 0, 2. What is the value at a? 0, 2. It is 9. Then you go back. J plus plus is 3. 3 less than 3 is false. So this condition fails. My for loop terminates. Then I will go back and then I'll increment the value of i to 1. Oh, sorry. I, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No. Now this loop has terminated. I just missed out a point. Okay. So over here, what has happened is I finished displaying the first row. Right. Now this condition J less than N has terminated, but I'm still inside these bigger brackets. So what I'll do is now that this for loop is gone, I'll just come out. I'll execute this slash N now printf slash N. It'll take the cursor on the next line. Now these brackets are over and now I'll go and increment the value of I to one. You remember those programs that we had taken on patterns nested for me, where what we were doing was we were just displaying say one row at a time and uh, then uh, 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 then the slash and was taking the cursor on the next line. Now something similar I've done over here. As soon as I've finished uh, displaying the first row, what I've done is I've just uh, executed this slash and this slash and will get executed only once. And that is at the end of the loop. Okay. Now this starts again for the, for the next step. So I plus plus is one. So I is one, one less than three is true. Come down. J goes back to zero. N is 3, 0 less than 3 is true. Display the value at A of I, J. I is 1, J is 0. A, 1, 0. The value at A, 1, 0 is 8. Now, the reason why it has gone on the next line is because the slash n was executed in the previous step. Now that this is over, I'll go over here. I plus plus is now 1. 1 less than 3 is true. I is 1, J is 1. So display the value at A, 1, 1. The value at A, 1, 1 is 2. Then again, go back. J plus plus is 2. 2 less than 3 is true. Display the value at A, 1, 2. Now this is A, 1, 2. What is the value at A, 1, 2? It is 7 again. Go back. I plus plus is 3. 3 less than 3 is false. This condition fails. But I'm still inside these bigger brackets. I'll again come out, execute this slash and will take my cursor on the next line. So every time Jwala loop terminates, this slash and will execute. And then I'll go back and I plus plus. Now it was 1. It has now become 2. So that is how this loop is executing this one more iteration. I'll just again erase out these little things. Okay. Okay. Now going further, I plus plus is now two, two less than three is true. Come down. J goes back to zero, zero less than three is true. Print A of I, J. I is two, J zero. What is the value at uh, two zero? The value is 12. So that comes over here. I hope now you know why it has gone on to the next line. Now I'll go back. J plus plus is one, one less than three is true. A of I, J. I is how much? I is uh, two and J is one. So A21, what is the value at A21? This is 5. Go back. J plus plus is 2. I come over here. 2 less than 3 is true. Display the value at A22. So A22 is 19. Go back. I plus plus is 3. Now J has become 3. 3 less than 3 is false. This condition fails. This for loop terminates. Come out. It will execute slash in. Take the cursor on the next line. Then I go back. I plus plus becomes three, 
three less than three this condition fails this condition fail everything terminates come out my program terminates so this is how i'm going to display the data from an array if you see the two loops over here the first one is for reading an array and second one is for for displaying an array it, both my for loops are identical row column i j the the prominent or the only difference for that matter is for reading i've used a scanf statement and obviously for displaying i've used printf statement so this is your complete program create a 2d array read uh, uh, read uh, um, the data and display the data so that's the end of the first program first